to the going to learn how to create a particle system in simulation nodes and how to change the scale of the particles of the instance over the time. So let's see it. Okay, let's create the particle meter from the start so you don't miss any step, important step. Let's go to geometry nodes, create a new profile, and let's use simulation zone because we want to use the simulation nodes. Let's delete this and let's use a UV sphere as a meter. So we want to join this UV sphere in the middle of simulation zone. By the way, if you don't know how this works, I recommend you to watch this tutorial to learn the basics of simulation nodes. So let's connect this here. And right now we have this object. Let me show you the spreadsheet. Okay, so let's convert this object to points with distribute points on faces. And remember when we use simulation zone, simulation nodes, and we press play. Now we have this number of points. And if I press play, you can see that every frame we are creating more and more points. Okay. However, we don't see any change because we don't have any vector to move this point. So let's add in the middle to create the movement side position. And what we could do, we could do something like this, but we want to use the object normals to push these points outwards. So let's get the object normal before converting to points with a store name attribute. And let's get the normal. Let's select vector because this is a vector. And let's write a name, for example, object normal. Okay, so we have this. This is the information of the object of the meter. And now I want to use this normal direction to offset these points outwards. So let's bring name attribute to use the same attribute, object normal and let's connect it here by the way it's a vector i don't know if this is working i don't know why it doesn't appear here anyway let's try if this works yes perfect now as you can see we have these weird lines because every frame is creating the points in the same position so we don't have random position so remember to change the position randomly we need to change the seat so let's use a scene time in frame. So every frame we will have a different scene. That means that we have a different position. So we have this animation. Okay, perfect. Now this is going too fast as you can see. So let's bring here a vector math to control the velocity with a scale. So with a scale, now we can control the velocity. If we decrease this, let's not do it negative. Okay, we have too much points, so let me decrease the original size of this object. So we have less points. And also you can play with this, we have less points. Something like that, it's okay, perfect. Now we have this, this is to create movement. And now what we want is to create like an attribute of age to define a lifetime, to delay the particles after some frames. So, as always, let's do this process. That always is the same. Let's create store name attribute to create the age attribute. And to create this attribute, we need to add here a math node and select one value. Because every frame we want to stack one value. By the way, we can select here integer. So later in the spreadsheet, we will see it better if we click here. We can see the eight, but now they have one. Because we need to reuse this information. So let's make a copy of this. And select eight, really important. And connect it here. So now it's working perfectly. As you can see, if I start again, for example, if I stop here, the first particles have this eight and the new particles have less and less age. Okay, perfect. We have this, and now what we want is to delete these particles based in age. So let's use the light geometry. Let's call this age. 
And here, what we want to do is to create like a Boolean, like a conditional. So we need to use this information. Let's make a copy and connect it here. So with this, we are saying, hey, delete all the points that are greater than this number. This number will be the lifetime. So for example, if I press play, now we don't see anything because we have zero. But if I increase this, you can see that now I'm defining the age, the maximum age, the lifetime of all the particles. Let's say something like 50. Also, you can check it in a spreadsheet. As you can see, there is an any particle that is older than this age, this lifetime. Perfect. Let's call this set life time. Okay, now let's give an object to this point. So let's go at the end and let's use, for example, instance on points and let's use UV spheres. Let's decrease this object here. So we have these spheres, as you can see. And now what I want is to make these objects decrease the scale based in the lifetime. So how we do that? To do this, what we have to do is to use here the scale, not this one, this one. And what we have to do is to use this information, the age. However, if we connect this here, basically what is happening is that every frame is adding one value to other particles. So if we press play, they are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger because we are using, remember, the information of the spreadsheet. So I think now I have to click here in instance. Yes, because now we have instance. So every particle now have this scale. Well, based in the rate. So we don't want that. We don't want to connect this directly here. What we want is to make like a conversion. So to do this, we need to use map range. With map range, we can make a conversion. So this value will be the eight is the value that we want to make like a conversion. And we want to connect it here, the result. So let's see what is happening right now. As you can see, nothing changed. It's like not connecting anything here. But actually, something is happening. Let me explain you well how this works. So these two values that say from minimum from maximum is how many frames it takes to get maximum the scale. So these two are the scale, okay? So for example, if I select five, you will see that now the particles maximum, the instance objects have a scale of five. Okay, so we know that this is the scale, right? Let's select one. And as I said, this is the number of frames it's taking to get maximum this scale. So that's why when we press play, they have already this scale because it's taking one single frame. And we don't want that. We want more time, more frames. So for example, let's select 20 and let's come back at the beginning. And now, as you can see, they are becoming bigger and bigger in 20 frames. So this is a map range and means to go from zero to one of a scale is taking from zero to 20, so 20 frames, to get this scale. So basically, to sum up, this is the time that is taking to get the maximum scale. So we can say, for example, 50. Okay, perfect. You got it, right? However, we want the opposite. What we want is that they start, for example, in one of a scale and they become smaller and smaller and smaller. So we have to invert this. We have to say, hey, from the beginning, from the frame zero, start in one of a scale. And when you reach this number, be zero of a scale. So right now, if we press play, they are becoming smaller and smaller. So this is how it works. As you can see, this number is the lifetime. So what you can do is to use this information here. You can write the same value, or what we can do to make it better, let's move this, is to create a value here and connect it here. 
So you can do something like this if you want to make it easier. Value, actually, I want to use an integer. And you can connect this here. Okay. And now with this, you can control the lifetime and how many frames it takes to become a smaller, to become zero of a scale. You can do like that if you want. It's the easiest method. But maybe later you want to color grade, to add a color to these particles, and you want to make the color change over the time, so with the lifetime. So I have already a tutorial of this. I'm not going to explain you how to do it in this tutorial. You can watch this tutorial in the information. But what I'm going to tell you, if you want to do this, what we have to do is to create an attribute for the lifetime. So instead of doing this, let's use another same attribute and let's call this, for example, lifetime. And if you are going to use a single value, then I don't know why I delete this. You can use this and connect it here. And instead of connecting this here, what you can do is to make a copy of this. And let me move this. Use this attribute, the lifetime, right? So let's select lifetime and connect it here. So it's the same like connecting this here, okay? But now we don't have so many wires in the middle. And it's more clean. So this is the lifetime that will be useful for later if you want, remember, to color grade these particles, to change the color of the particles based in the lifetime. Now, before we finish, I want to show you how to do this randomly, because now all the particles have the same lifetime, 50. But let's add a random value. So the only thing we have to do is to delete this and use a random value. Random value and connect it here. And with this random value, we can define the maximum lifetime, for example, 50, and the minimum. You can leave it in zero, but I'm going to select five. So with these two values, we are saying, A, all the particles now will have a random value of lifetime between maximum 50, minimum five. And this information, as we are storing this information here, is already being sent here. So we don't have to change this value. And as you can see right now, we have a more random lifetime and a scale. So this is the final setup, as you can see. The only change I did is instead of connecting this here, I just make a copy of this and add it here. So you can see how it works. We use the age as a value and as maximum, we use the lifetime. And here we define the maximum scale and this we leave it like that because we want this to start from the frame zero. By the way, before we finish, if you want, what you can do also is to give a random velocity to every particle because right now they have the same velocity. But we can do the same like before with the lifetime. So what we can do is to bring a random value and connect it here. And we can define a minimum value, a minimum velocity, and a maximum velocity. For example, I don't know, 0 0.1. And let's select 0 0.5. And let's see. Now, as you can see, some particles go faster and others go slower. So let me decrease this and this a little bit. Not too much, something like that. Let me see. Now you can see better, right? Some particles go faster, another slower. So as you can see, this is the final setup. I just add some colors to the groups so you can see better the difference and what is doing each one. And if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and remember you can do this project and many more and watch exclusive tutorials on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.